Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are here at the SDN NFE World Congress in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with Prodip Sen, who is CTO Network Functions Virtualization NFE at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Prodip, great to see you again. Good to see you again. Um, a few questions for you. Starting with this, it's five years now since the first NFE white paper was published. Um, in your opinion, where are we now in terms of the viability of the technology and the adoption of it by CSPs? So I think the viability of the technology is no longer in question. For a couple of years now, I think that has been the case, that the first part of the journey in these five years was precisely to look at that viability and see whether it made sense uh, as a technology for the carriers, etc. I think that uh, barrier we crossed some time ago. Uh, where we are now is, uh, and, and as proof, uh, proof point for that is that almost all carriers are in some stage of the NFV journey. Either they're starting out and issuing RFIs, others are issuing RFPs, others are acquiring equipment, others are actually in deployments, albeit limited, but still deployments. Um, so the question of viability or whether this is the right way or what, how should we do it, I think has been answered. The question, the harder questions are now being asked. How do we do it? When do we do it? In what way do we do it? And uh, this is a natural stage of the evolution. Um, so I think we're in the right place. Perhaps we're not um, f as far as we would have liked to be, uh, but all of us who have been working in the telco industry for a while know that any transformation takes a while. So this was not going to be a quick <laughs> transition. No. Uh, so it's taking its course. And uh, to be fair, we're also learning along the way. So we're adapting to what really works. And so that's where we are. I think people are serious about doing it and trying to make uh, the right decisions. And obviously at this time, uh, you have to think carefully about what decision to make. There have been um, some murmurings from some places, oh, NFE's, you know, it's not what it's cracked up to be, it's taking much longer than we thought it would be to make it oper operational and so on. But your knowledge and my knowledge of the telecom industry is that these, any kind of transformation takes a decade. Yep. Uh, it's always, nearly always been 10, sometimes 15 years to do it. So right. doing it in five is asking a lot, obviously. Right. But nonetheless, there are these, there's a bit of agitation out there saying, well, we'd like it to be faster. Is there, does it need to be done more quickly than it is being done? I mean, what's happened has happened. You know now it's viable technology and it's going to work. Does it need to be speeded up at all? Can uh, you speed it up? Yeah, I, th I think we can. I think we need to, but it requires some effort, <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So um, the thing is that, um, when we started this journey, we knew all along that it's not just a technology transformation. It's a business and process transformation. Sure. And those, the few carriers who realized that early on have made more progress. Um, and others who did not quite realize that have been slower to adopt, uh, adopt and slower to make the change. And I think that's the thing which can be speeded up that Rather than deferring this business and process transformation, address it up front. Because without that, you really cannot adopt these new kinds of technologies. If my procurement process is still trying to do what it did for 20 years and uh, acquire and, and uh, procures equipment and software from vendors in the same old way, uh, then trying to get this new technology and new flexibility into the network is not going to be possible because uh, the way vendors are trying to build new systems and new uh, structures to support the operators in this journey, that, that has to be sold differently, the business engagement has to be different, and if, I, if the carriers procure in the same way, that's not going to work. So I think that's the issue really, that um, you need to make these changes, you need to make process changes throughout, and it's not just running the network which has to change, it's also procurement which has to change. 
And realizing that early enough, fast enough, trying to make those changes, and I'm not talking about wholesale changes and trying to change everything at once, but you recognize that and in the domain or in the area you're trying to make the change, make the business process change also. Right. I think that will speed things up. Otherwise, we're sort of in the danger of getting into a vicious cycle of downward spiraling investment because the vendors have invested a lot into this, as have some carriers, but now they're starting to look for returns. And if that doesn't show up soon, the vendor investment is going to go down, and then we're back into a downward spiral. Okay, thank you. Ultimately, the, the transformation journey is about CSPs being able to deliver a better customer experience. So how are SDN and NFE going to help you gain the best possible insight into the current and future needs of customers, who in the end, after all, are going to be paying for this? I think uh, that uh, was something uh, we looked at early on. So those of us who were engaged in, in the beginnings of this industry journey, uh, we're looking at precisely the customer experience, the business uh, issues, and these approaches, NFV, SDN, et cetera, were attempts to create technologies, create more than technology, create ways of thinking about the network and ways of delivering services which precisely address those business problems. How do I provide better experience to the customer? Things like you know, faster time to market, things like flexibility, changing, adapting to the customer needs. All of those were precisely the reasons we started this journey. So sure. uh, I think that has not changed. The, the promise of SDN and NFV, if you actually implement it, is still the same. Uh, and with all of these new um, areas being explored by carriers, whether you call it IoT, 5G, all of these things, um, require a lot of investment from the carriers from base technology perspective, but if they don't adapt these new techniques, then their investment in the base technology is going to be hard to recover because uh, ultimately all of these new areas, whether it's 5G services or it's IoT, require more flexibility and agility. As NFE matures and as it becomes common parlance, not just within the industry, but, out, but in, in other industries as well and elsewhere, we also, something else always arises to take the place of the previous. And uh, one of the things we're hearing a lot about now is AI, machine learning, and above all, automation. Clarifications are given. Automation, automation, automation. What do these terms mean in the context of network transformation? And how important are they to that? Yeah, and I think it's, it's sort of a natural progression. Um, if you look at, uh, again, going back to the business reasons for doing this, the flexibility and agility, I virtualize the network, I virtualize the functions, I make them more flexible, I can move them around, etc. Uh, but then it doesn't work if I stumble on, for example, the network, if the network is not flexible. Mm. So that's that why early on we realized that Unless you do SDN together with NV, you cannot make that transition work because now I have a flexible part of the infrastructure but the other part I'm, I'm um, stuck on. Same way, I can get the network and the other resources to be flexible and agile and I'm able to use them in different ways. But now if I stumble on the OS, uh, operation side of it, on the OSS side of it, and they are rigid and they're not flexible and they don't respond in time, again, I'm left with a set of resources which you can't really use. Uh, and so I think we all always knew that you have to make this transformation in all these dimensions. But when we started, and I think most people, when uh, they started down this journey, they had to constrain themselves and try not to boil the ocean and, and try to focus on what they could <laughs> change initially and that was the network itself and the network infrastructure itself. But all along this notion of operations and OSS being quicker, faster and automated was there. And a case in point is orchestration. The need for uh, this thing called network orchestration, MANO, all of those things we've talked about in the industry recently, 
Um, all of that came about because we realized that you couldn't, I can virtualize infrastructure, but I need to be able to operate on it. So I need something to uh, handle it, to manage it, and that was orchestration. Yeah. We call it something different. Some people would have called it management. We call it something different because it was inside the network. It was not in the management plane. It was more along what we used to call the control plane. But that's just semantics. It's, it's really doing the same functions, but we are embedding those functions in the network. So that was the start. And then, uh, for example, HP um, uh, recognized this early on, and so though we had products launch in the orchestration space, our NFV director, we had already started working on, and now it's already a product, at the service orchestration space, which is looking at end-to-end -end service and automating that service instantiation experience using things like the NFV director underneath. So this is a natural progression, and I think it's an example of what this automation really will be, is that taking bits of operations technology, OSS technology, and embedding it in the network in a more um, dynamic way, uh, in a way which allows it to operate more dynamically. And I think when we talk about uh, zero touch automation or all of these things, that's the ultimate goal where all of these operations functions become embedded in the network infrastructure as services which you can call on uh, from um, an end-to-end -end service perspective and make the operations experience faster and um, more autonomic. So that's Again, though we're talking about zero touch automation now and it seems to be a new buzzword, it's just formalizing something which we have started early on. And I think it's a good thing that we're focusing on this now. Different sort of question now then, Pradeep. Um, what has surprised you most of all on this uh, five year journey so far to NFE? Uh, I'd say the surprise came early on when we a few of us who had gotten together and were working on this and trying to create some momentum in the industry to work on this, we really didn't, uh, we thought it would be a real uphill battle and we hoped we'd get a few, uh, few companions in the journey and to start it. But the response early on was immense and huge and so we were really surprised with the way uh, it took off. And I'm now surprised that five years on, it's still there. <laughs> it hasn't died out. It has perhaps morphed in ways we didn't imagine before, but that's a, understood. Any, any journey, uh, you can't really anticipate all the things which have to happen. Uh, so those things have happened, but the fact that this is still, this conference is a case in point, that this conference is still around. Uh, lots of people here showing lots of interesting <laughs> things and we're moving in this space, continue to move in this space. I think that's what surprised me, that when we started this, we really didn't think um, it would take on so quickly and, and people would stay engaged for, with this kind of momentum. That's a very positive um, uh, surprise. Yeah. Let's move to something maybe a little less positive. If you could borrow Telecom TV's famous time machine, yeah. which we keep, well, it looks like a fridge in London, um, and you could change one thing in the industry, NFV, and the experience you've had over the last five years, what would that be? Yeah, I think it, it's related to what I said earlier, is that though we all recognize the need for organization change, process change, business model change, and we talked about it, we really didn't engage in that activity. We didn't help the carriers move in that direction. And I think that's something, in hindsight, I would have changed, that we paid a lot of attention to the technology and how it would uh, work and how it could be uh, useful, but we didn't really make the effort to help the carriers change, start that change in business model and process early on. We, we all did talk about it, but you know, it was more of advice rather than actually coming up with ways to help the carriers. So I think that's something that would have changed. Uh, if you had. And finally, we all know that prediction, especially in industry, is for idiots, so don't let's do it. <laughs> um, it's bad enough to think what might happen six months out, never mind yeah. five years. But given that it seems likely that the NFV arc is going to be about 10 years in duration, right. we're halfway through it. 
What do you make of what we've been talking about? AI, machine learning, automation, cloudification, NFV, SDN, the network which doesn't matter, the network doesn't matter whether it's cellular, mobile, whether it's fixed, whatever it may be. What, how do you see that network being in five years time? So, <laughs> in the spirit of <laughs> the question and the fact that we cannot really predict, I will say that the vision we started off with, we will have realized the vision, but we will have realized it in ways we didn't imagine. It's a very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to use that myself, very good. <laughs> Pradeep Sen, as usual, thank you so much. Glad to be here, thank you.